This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Uh, hello friends, uh, this is a 50 year old man with an intermittent cataract. It is a challenging case, no doubt. Of course, uh, the lens is swollen, but what is critical here is that there does not seem to be any subcapsular pockets of fluid cortex, which we commonly see in other intermittent cataracts. The cortex is more jelly-like and I don't expect when we puncture the fluid to come out. Anyway, let's see how things pan out here. So after staining the anti-capsule, I am using dispersive OVD to fill in the chamber. As soon as we puncture, I don't see any fluid which is aggressing out. Again, confirming the fact that the cortex is more jelly-like. So I'm using micro forceps uh, through the side port to minimize any escape of OVD. My plan is to do a two-stage rexus, make an initial small one. I'm trying to keep the flap as flat as possible and not to fold it. But unfortunately, the capsule sticks on to the forceps resulting in an uncontrolled tear. Well, I should have stopped now, uh, go back and fill the chamber with some more OVD and again, should have got my focus back in getting a small primer rexus. But, you know, as happens, uh, probably a momentary lapse in concentration, which makes me to ignore the warnings and continue just like that. So I do continue. I'm trying to perform the rescue maneuver. I'm trying to keep it, uh, pull it towards the center, but it is uncontrolled and there she goes. Let us rewind and try to analyze how we could have done better. At this moment, we can clearly see that the edge of the tear is already heading outwards. Uh, my rescue maneuver, that is in my direction of pull, was towards the center and away from the direction of the tear. It was fine, but the issue really was the flap needed to be totally flat. During the rescue maneuver, we can see that there is some degree of the capsule having folded on itself which should not have been the case. How I could have avoided this would be probably I could have stopped, went back and formed the chamber again with OVD which would have given me some more time to plan it out well. I should have used the opposite side port which would have changed my angle of attack and I should have used a micro forceps to the opposite side port which should have ensured that the flap would have been much more flatter and my pull and the rescue maneuver would have been more effective. Anyways, uh, we have a situation at hand now, so we need to proceed. So I'm using a scissors to cut this flap out. I need to enlarge the intact portion of the rexus. I decompress the bag by aspirating out the soft lens matter before enlarging the rexus. The capsular opening is enlarged. At this moment, I made a conscious decision to continue with FACO and not to convert to SICS. Well, this is based on two criteria. Number one, the lens matter is quite soft, so it shouldn't be an issue to emulsify it. And the second one be the pupil size looks all right and I shouldn't have an issue. So I proceed with fake emulsification. I don't do any hydrodissection. There is no rotation of the nucleus. The direct vertical chop is performed. Care is taken that the lateral separation, the rotation maneuvers are very gentle to avoid any stress on the capsular edge and the zonules. Another tricky situation is, in this case, is that the tone anti-capsular edge is hidden under the pupil and I'm not able to assess the flap motility sign, which is a valuable sign to monitor the posterior extension of the anti-capsular tear if and when it happens. Nevertheless, after two chops, one of the fragments is pulled out into the anti-chamber and emulsified. Next, the remaining entire heminucleus is gently maneuvered out of the capsular bag into the antechamber and then emulsified in a similar fashion. Contrary to my usual suggestions of emulsifying the nucleus in the bag at a much more posterior plane, we can see that my plane of emulsifying these fragments is very much in the antechamber. Well, the obvious reason is to minimize any stress on the capsular bag and to prevent any posterior extension of the tone and recapsule during these maneuvers. After the nucleus, the epinucleus needs to be mobilized out of the bag. 
It seems to be stuck there. I'm using a combination of controlled hydro and visco dissection to finally maneuver the epinucleus out of the bag. Once the epinucleus is out of the bag, it's aspirated out quite easily. And finally, the cortex is being taken care of. Now is the time to place the lens into the bag. Care needs to be taken that the haptics are placed in such a way that they are oriented 90 degrees away from the anti-capsular tear. And then finally, the OVD both in front and back of the lens is removed. That's it, the case is done, the patient eventually went on to do well. Thank you for watching and hope this helps.